Shalom. First off, we want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High God, your name, Yahweh. In the name of Yahweh Shahu, the world eminently calls Jesus Christ. In the name of the Rakakodash, which is the Holy Spirit that comforts and guides us, especially during these perilous times to come. I also want to give a double honor to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who teach and rule well with truth and sincerity and peace and salutations to the elect. As you can see on the picture, it said 12-year-old girl hit with murder charges after suffocating her cousin in a bunk bed, cleaned up the scene, and repositioned her cousin bodies. Victim mom was told earlier they were arguing over an iPhone. And as we can see, as the scriptures say, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many should wax cold. That's Matthew 24 and 12 well, and 12. It reads, I'm going to read it again. It's, it reads, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that endure, shall endure unto the end, the same shall be, sa to be saved. Yeah, and as we can see, like I said, the love of many is waxing cold. She murdered her, her cousin over an iPhone. And ultimately, that's basically idol worship. And that's ultimately what they push, especially here in Babylon. The great Babylon, the great being America. Also known as, you know, spiritual Egypt, Sodom, etc. Code names in the scriptures. Because, of course, if they just put America in the scriptures, like the apostles be saying, that they were, they would have basically banned the Bible. But we understand that it's only the elect that's going to understand what's going on in had the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven and ultimately what's going to go, go on leading up to that. The Lord has put the spirit on his servants, the prophets, to be able to break down these scriptures. The ones doing it in truth and sincerity, specifically starting from our elders and apostles of Great Millstone on down to the men that teach the same doctrine. And as you can see, it says, she cleaned up the scene and repositioned her cousin's body. At 12 years old, so ultimately she knew that she did something wrong. And she tried to find a way to basically cover her tracks. <laughs> That's why the scriptures say, Jeremiah 4 and 22, For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sottish children. And we know sottish means ultimately stupid. That's what the Lord is calling his people because that's where most of our people are. Especially the ones that come up against this truth. They don't know the Lord and they don't want to get to know the Lord because they want to continue to indulge in wickedness and folly. I'm going to continue on. It reads, and they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil. Like her, like I said, the little girl, she was able to plan out what she was going to do. And ultimately she did it and tried to cover up her tracks. But to do good, they have no knowledge. And like I said, they don't want to receive the knowledge to do good. Because if they did, they would be listening to the men of the Lord. But we understand that majority of our people are rebellious. We're Israelites. <laughs> Today consisting of the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. And the Israelite foreigners that may look like heathen, but are not heathen because their father's sea line traces back to one of the 12 progenitors of the 12 tribes of Israel. That's written in my bio. Those are the people who the Lord's statute of commandments were given to in the scriptures. The Lord's chosen people, but due to our disobedience, as you can see, a majority of our people are doing today, which is going to cause them to be destroyed. The curses came upon us, written in Deuteronomy 28, verse 15 on down. But that's why, like I said, the Lord has put the spirit on his men to preach this word, to tell our people to repent, 
to turn back to the Lord. Seek him while he may be found before all hell breaks loose. Because as we can see, it's about to break loose. We see what's going on with the the president campaign, etc. And ultimately, everything is in the will of Yahweh Hashem Yahushua. The Lord controls both sides. So regardless of what people think that they're making a decision on their votes, etc., it's up to the Lord's will. So we really don't give a damn who's in who's in the president who wins the president campaign. We ultimately are with what's going on based on prophecy. And we know that the Lord is judging daily. Zephaniah 3 and 5, it reads, The just Lord is in the midst thereof. He will not do iniquity. Every morning doth he bring his judgment to light. He faileth not, but the unjust knoweth no shame. And that was this little girl's time. But our people have been fooled and basically destroyed for lack of knowledge, like it says in Hosea 4 and 6. We would discontinue from our hurts, so our people don't have the fear of the Lord. Only the elect, the, the elect, the small number that's going to ultimately be delivered out of the destruction to come is going to receive this truth. The majority of our people are going to have to die death by pain on this side because they ultimately didn't receive the truth. Deuteronomy 32 and 39, it reads... This is the Lord talk speak this this is speaking about the Lord. It reads, See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. So not not Jesus Christ, not Allah, not Buddha, not yourself. I kill and I make alive, I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver you deliver out of my hand. No one can deliver you out of the hands of Yahweh Bashim Yahushah. If they want to get you, they're going to get you. Whether you think you're hiding or not. So it will behoove you to fear the Lord. But we understand that that's ultimately a gift to receive the fear of the Lord. And it was created with the faithful in the womb, like the scriptures say. So that's why when these people are getting judged... We understand what's going on. Of course, we under if we ain't, we understand what's going on. But of course, us being in the flesh, we might have loved ones that have to be judged. But we understand, we understand that it, it must come. But when I first saw this 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 story, it made me think about this one scripture in um, First John. This was the first scripture I thought of. First John, I'm gonna start at verse. Nineteen, but the point is in twenty one, the point that I wanted to get. It reads, and we know that we are of the most high and the whole world life and wickedness. Majority of this world life and wickedness, but us that receive this truth, we know that we of Yahweh Bashim Yahshua. We're the we're Israel, the Israelite. Israel in the Hebrew is Yahshua Allah. He prince of power. Whether a lot of our people don't want to receive it or not. Because they lie in wickedness. Along with this world. That they're being, con that they're conformed to. The scriptures say Romans 12 and 2 I believe. Be not conformed with this world. But be ye transformed with the renewing of your mind. You're supposed to be renewing your mind to ultimately come back to the righteous ways. Rehearse the righteous acts, Judges 5 and 11, like it says, to the best of our ability. Of course, we can't keep all the laws 100%, but we we supposed to be rehearsing. While the earth is in the hands of this wicked devil, the so-called white man. For a season, it's about to come to an end, as we can see, it's circling the drain. Verse 20, 1 John 5, verse 20, reads, and we know that the Son of God is come and have given us an understanding that we may know him that is true and we are in him that is true. And even his son, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, this is the true power and eternal life. But this, like I said, this is the first scripture that jumped in my mind, verse 21. It reads, little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. Because like I said, basically, she killed her, she murdered her, because as we know, there's a such thing as a righteous kill, but she murdered 
the eight year old, the twelve year old murdered the eight year old because of an argument over an iPhone. Like I said, that's idol worship. That's one of the first Ten Commandments. We we're not supposed to make idols for ourselves. Matter of fact, I'm gonna grab Deuteronomy chapter five. Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse 7 it reads thou shall have none Slaki, hold on Like it one second. Yeah, Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse 7 it reads, Thou shalt have none other gods before me, thou shalt not make thee any grave images or any likeness of anything that is in heaven or above that is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters beneath. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord, thy power, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children upon the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So, yeah, basically, she made, she, she basically, her, like I said, murdering that, that, the eight year old over the iPhone is basically, it's like she's considering it. The um, the iPhone as as a god, and that's not what we're supposed to be doing. It's like she worshiping the phone, and as you see, it says, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So ultimately, the Lord judged the little girl, the eight year old, you know. Because as we know, we come back every third and fourth generation, as the scriptures say. But I'm going to jump over to Deuteronomy 5 and verse 17. It reads, thou shalt not murder. That's what it's supposed to say. So she basically broke both of those. <laughs> But some people believe that these things are harsh, you know. They think that it's, that it's harsh because they don't understand the judgment of the Lord. They don't understand what's pleasing in the sight of the Lord. Like like I um, brought out in Jeremiah the fourth chapter in the 22nd verse, it says, they have not known me. It says in Isaiah 55 and 8, The Lord said his thoughts are not your thoughts, neither the way neither your ways his ways. So it will behoove you to take heed to what the men that the Lord has put the spirit on to understand what's pleasing in his sight on what's needed to be done for salvation so that you could possibly be saved if it's in the will of Yahweh But I'm gonna grab Proverbs twenty eight and verse five reads Evil men understand not judgment. But they that seek the Lord understand all things. So the ones that are seeking the Lord in truth and sincerity are going to understand what's going on. And since I brought it out, like I said, like I said, we come back every third and fourth generation to be judged in the flesh. You die, you go into the spirit world, and then you receive your judgment in the flesh. And that was that girl's judgment and that includes, you know, what's going to ever, what's going to happen to the 12-year-old. The it reads, Job 4 and 7. Remember, I pray thee, whoever perished being innocent, or where were the righteous cut off? So no one has perished being innocent. The Lord knows your spirit. Verse 8, it reads, even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same. 
By the blast of the Most High, they perish, and by the breath of his nostrils are they consumed. And that's ultimately why the, the scriptures give us the blueprint on the things that we need, like I said, to be maneuvering during these times. To not ultimately stumble and cause us to get caught up with the ways of this world. 1 John 2 and 15, it reads, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Because we understand we're supposed to be using the world, but not abusing the world. So you're not supposed to love the things in the world. Of course, you're supposed to do what you need to do to get through the day, pray to the Lord to receive your daily bread, etc. But you're not supposed to be in love with this world because like the scriptures say, this is not our rest. It reads, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Because we, like like I read in First John, the fifth chapter in the 19th verse, that this world, life, and wickedness. Verse 16, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not other father, but it's other world. And we understand, like I said, that that iPhone, she was she she was lusting for that iPhone <laughs> to the point that she couldn't help herself. She was she was so angry that her flesh took over and caused her to take the eight year old's life. And the world passeth away in the lust there, but he that doeth the will of the most high abide it forever. Because ultimately like we understand by this world, America, spiritually, like I said, Sodom, Egypt, is going to be destroyed by way of thermonuclear fire by them ICBM missiles. Everything over here is going to be burnt up and destroyed. So during that time, when the missiles are shot over here, the one third the elect out of the nation of Israel will be delivered, you know, beamed up in the chariots. And two thirds of our people got to take part of that lake of fire. She didn't have to, the, 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 the eight-year-old obviously didn't have to take part in the lake of fire, but she got her judgment. But it's going to be, be people on here, just like when the flood came. It was men, women, children, babies. The Lord knows your spirit, like I said. Of course, these heathen are going to be destroyed that's over here. The ones that make it on the other side of the world, you know, the elect. On the other side, the Lord is going to deliver them how and get them however way he see fit. But the wicked is still going to be destroyed. That, that is going to receive this truth that the Lord ultimately wants to judge. And the the heathen that's, that actually that makes it on that side, that's, you know, the ones, especially the elites that's in their bunkers on the other side of the world, they're going to be put first fruits of slavery. And the kingdom will happen to come, which will be on earth. But like I said, the, the little girl, she, the lust of the flesh caused her to commit a sin. And that's why we got to continue to pray. Like Yahweh Shah stated out, and I believe it's in Matthew 26 and verse 41. Pray that we enter in that temptation. Because that temptation would cause you, Satan would use things to tempt you, to cause you to go off. And of course we understand we might go off, but that's why we continuously pray to Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah. I'm going to go to James chapter 1. And I'm going to start at verse 12. It reads, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of the Most High. For the Most High cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted by he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lusts have conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it fini is finished, bringeth forth death. We know the wages of sin is death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom in no verbalness need a shadow of turning. Of his own will begot he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of the Most High. So, yeah, 
we got to be slow to wrath, slow to anger, etc. Because we understand that this world will can really vex a a person that's that's basically trying to please the Lord. Verse twenty one. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness super, and superfluity of naughtiness and receive the meekness with meekness the engraved the word which is able to save your souls. And that's ultimately what we preaching. The words of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So yeah, you gotta actually do the work. Like I said, faith without works is dead. For if any man be a hearer of the word and do not a doer, he is like unto a man holding beholding his natural face in the glass, for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. <laughs> And that reminds me of how the people, you know, even though we understand there's no truth in there, people that go to go to church and they get they 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 the Christian churches, et cetera, and they hear the, the the words and the scriptures and then they just go back out into the world and become a nigga and think that everything is all good just because they went to they they went to so called church. But we gotta get this wisdom and knowledge. Like it says in Isaiah 33 and 6, is wisdom and knowledge is to be the stability of our times. Because that's the only thing that's going to be able to help us maneuver during these wicked and perilous times. Because if that little girl, of course, you know, <laughs> if she knew how she was supposed to handle things, she would have understood. Like it says in Ephesians 4 and 26, it reads, Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon upon your wrath. And from my knowledge, you know, I believe she suffocated the girl while she was asleep or something like that. So she 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 basically was angry and ended up sinning. And she probably felt like she was at during the time while she was angry. I think the scriptures st state that wrath was not created for man, roughly paraphrasing. But she was so angry that she during that time when Satan was able to tempt her, you know, because, of course, you know, Satan jumps on you when you, in certain situations, you know, you're overly drunk, overly angry, etc. When you don't have the fear and faith of y'all by Shimei Al Sha, so she ended up thinking, she, at that moment, she felt like she was doing something that she should be doing. Proverbs 14 and 12, there's a way which seemed right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So, yeah, she thought that she was doing something right. And like I said, ultimately, people are addicted to their technology. Like I said, ultimately, it's, it's idol worship. They worship in this technology. And you un and we understand that people, they get real comfortable when they bring out this technology. You know, Uber Eats, etc. People get lazy. The new Every time a new iPhone come out, some people just got to have it. Whether they just brought the latest one on, like the day before, they just got to have it. The new shoes, new clothes, new everything. Basically vanity. So when these devils come out and make the RFID microchip mandatory and they say, oh, you you, you going to have to buy, you, got, you can't buy or sell unless you have it. And, and they make it seem so convenient. All you got to do is just, you know, tap your hand, you know, scan your forehead, etc. And you can just be out the store quick and possible. People are going to say, wow, that's... That's quick and convenient and ultimately lead them to be destroyed, like the scriptures say. Revelation 13 and 16, and he calls of all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark. And we know we go into that word mark in this scripture is karagma. It's, it's, it's an imprinted mark in their right hand or in their forehead and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So we understand if you take it, like it's written in Revelation 14 and 9, since I'm here, and the third angel followed, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same should drink of the wine of the wrath of the Most High, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. So that's the judgment that a person will receive if they take the mark of the beast, the RFID microchip. So it will behoove you that you 
pray to the Lord that you put that the Lord put the spirit on you to not take it, even if it has to be into death. Because we understand, like I spoke on, you 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 come back, and you, and of course we want to come back with our head held high. If we do have to play the lot of basically dying for the the righteous for righteousness' sake. A lot of us are already suffering for righteousness sake doing this work. But it will be a it will be a, a sad thing to get all the way to that point to the end and end up basically giving up. Basically like Apostle Paul spoke on in first Corinthians the, the ninth chapter starting at the twenty fourth verse verse that is like you basically ran as if you beat at the air. You basically wasted all that energy just to just to give up at the end. But Lord willing, that was edifying. Shalom. Oh, yeah, I seen a 